Rella is an anime style illustrator, but not just any anime style illustrator. She is a master of light and shadow. When looking at her work, I'm always stunned by the beautiful and diverse lighting. So naturally, that's made me wonder, how can I do something similar? Are there patterns in her process that will allow us to get similar results? So in this video, I'll be attempting to break down six of Rella's unique lighting scenarios, showing you how I've applied these techniques to my own illustration attempts in order to see if Rella's techniques can help fix my boring lighting. You see, recently, when looking back at my illustrations, I realized that I was using mostly the same lighting on the same kind of background. And while that's not necessarily bad, it's missing that wow factor. That emotional impact that can be seen in Rella's illustrations. Take this illustration for example. The usage of light not only made this beautiful, but calming and just magical. Ever since seeing this illustration, I've been dying to know how it was done. I was curious about what secret techniques I could learn from this. So I decided to break it down and try applying the techniques to my own illustrations. First off, I started with recreating the background, then add the base color. When you start with the background, it makes picking colors for the shadows much easier. The shadows, which was just one layer on multiply blend mode. I first filled in the whole layer, then erased parts to show the light. Next, I added a second darker shadow to give the image more depth and form. I sometimes use lock transparent pixels to do this, or just create a second multiply layer. Lastly, Brella likes to add glows, dust, and sparkles. Then finish off the illustration by adding chromatic aberration. And that was it. That was so simple that it kinda scares me. I find that there's only like six main steps to this. However, recreating the illustration was the easy part. The hard part is to see if I can actually apply this to my own illustration attempt to see if it's actually as simple as it looks or if I'm missing some crucial steps. I started with the background. I did this quickly just to get the feel of the lighting. Then add the base color. And since the background is blue, the shadow will reflect the same blue color. When we isolate Rella's shadows, we can have a clear understanding of how she shapes the light. Here we can see big shapes informing us of the direction of the light, and smaller shapes for details like lights going through the hats. When I tried doing the same thing, I find adding light to be more straightforward and less intimidating. Thinking in shape hierarchies will also make your composition more appealing. Now that we've got the overall vibe of the image down, it's time to add details. And here's where things started to fall apart for me. You see, when I compared my progress to Rella's, I started to get really worried. While Rella's already looked super polished, mine just looked flat and dirty. Despite that, I continued with adding the darker shadows, just like Rella. But when I did that, it somehow looked even worse. Maybe I should add a bounce light. I could fix it, right? But wait, how much should I add? Is that too much? Is that too little? No matter how many times I tried adjusting the illustration, it just doesn't have the same feeling as Rilla's illustrations. Not that it's a bad thing, I actually think that this turned out alright. But I felt frustrated when it comes to adding shadows and bounce light. I understood how to do it, but I couldn't understand why or where to add it. I had the technical skills, but lacked fundamental knowledge to use them effectively. And then it hits me. Techniques alone won't solve my lighting issues. It's the deeper understanding of theory which enables for flexibility and creative freedom down the line. So I decided to properly study light and shadows. As for how, I found this book which perfectly complements Rilla's techniques, answering many questions I had during my study. Alright, let's keep this short. Color and Light is a book by James Gurney. For the next 50 seconds, I'll show you my main takeaways. First are the 8 different types of light sources, with 5 often used by Rella. I had no idea that clouds played such a big role in colors. Just look at how it changes the colors of the light of the sky. I'm talking about clouds, do you want to know why the sky is blue? Yeah, me neither, but apparently it's pretty important. This was due to a phenomenon called Rayleigh scattering. Sunlight, which is made of many colored waves, scatters when it interacts with the atmosphere. Blue light scatters more due to its shorter wavelength, therefore less atmosphere results in more blue lights, while a thicker atmosphere reduces blue color. Other than the sky, there's different types of character lighting. Half shadow, three quarter lighting, frontal lighting, edge lighting, contour, and spot lighting. Oh, and I finally understood the form principle, I hope. The things that I thought were important were the form shadow and cast shadow. Knowing the difference between the two will help you make better shading decisions. And now armed with basic understanding of light and color, I'm excited to dive back into the study and apply what I've learned. After a sunny scene, it's time to try something darker. I decided to break down this image due to its simplicity. Starting with the background, base color, 
the shadow, the lights, and then some details. So let's dive into each while applying it into my own attempt. I began with the night sky, which was just a gradient. Then stars using the default spray brush. And added base color and shadows, which really helped put the characters into the scene. When picking colors for the shadows, I like to just eye drop the background color, then adjust it from there. In Red Light's illustration, you can see a darker gradient for parts that light cannot reach. And after adding that with the soft brush, we're pretty much halfway done. Next, it's time to add the lights. Red likes using crisp white lights in her night illustrations. Here, the white light is coming from a hidden light source behind the character. Although, initially, I thought that this white light was the moonlight. But after some research, I realized that that's not possible. Unless the illustration is set in space, where there's no atmosphere. So when it comes to the night scene, you could decide between a hidden light source or that the whole scene is set in space. Here I use Add Blend Mode for the light, since I find it to be the most versatile for Relis style. But it really doesn't matter which one you use. Don't forget to also add this colored light, which I'm assuming to be light fall off. The final steps were to add the secondary shadows for details, then Relis iconic dust and sparkles. I made a custom brush for the sparkles, which you can download from below. Don't forget to also add some chromatic aberration. And that was it! Wait, that was it? Uh, this looks kind of bad. So I decided to add some flowers and a lot of blurs to make it more interesting. And here's how it turned out. I think the downfall of this image wasn't the lighting, but instead the composition, camera angle, and this awkward pose. Which resulted in a flat looking character, but technique wise, I think I did pretty well. The fundamentals that I learned from the book also helped me quite a lot, especially with identifying where this light was coming from. And I think the next step now, is to test whether the techniques that we just learned can also be used in a scene with completely opposite lightings. So let's try and find that out in Rella's Spotlight's lighting. Now, the majority of the character is engulfed in lights. To do this, I started with the same steps. Background and base color. The background here was supposed to be a wall, so I added a cast shadow to show just that. Next, I added soft shadows to show the form of the character. For lighting, I decided to go with an intense circular spotlight. I did this by painting a circular light on top of the character and the background. This lighting scenario is often used to create a dramatic mood and tone, which is perfect for the more mysterious vibe that I'm going for. My light source is coming from around here, so I'm adding shadows around the top part of the character. Sharpness or the softness of shadow depends on the distance and angle of the light. Shadows closer to the light will have crisper edges, while those further away will appear softer. At this point, I had the look and feel of the image down, so it's time to add the details. I noticed in Vela's work that areas in strong lights often have fewer details. This was because the intense lighting eliminates the shadows, resulting in an overblown effect. So I made sure not to add too much details to the areas closer to the light source. Once all that was done, I added Vela's iconic dust particles. Then I used Gaussian blur and grain to emulate the effect of camera in low lighting. And finally, chromatic aberration to wrap things up. I'll be honest, I have no idea how it turned out this well. I'm really happy with the outcome. But despite that, there's still a lot of flaws when it comes to the process and outcome. On the technical side, I feel like the hair could have been better. It's still quite flat compared to Vela's. And on the theory side, this lighting scenario was still a big mystery to me. I only managed to get to this point all thanks to having Vela's art as art direction and real life photos as references for lights, shadows, and colors. Without those things, I wouldn't have been able to do this. While the color and light book helped me zoom out and understand basic theories, now I need help with zooming in and focusing more on lights and shadows in specific scenarios. And I think I got just the thing. Light for Visual Artists is a book by Richard Yacht, which focuses on different lighting scenarios. We got frontal, side, back, above, below, explanation of every single sky you could think of. Oh wow, look at this one. Maybe I'll try this in a bit. And sections on shadows, indoor lights, and materials. But I actually got this book just to read this section on specific lighting scenarios. So after going through all of them, I just went straight to applying them in the next attempt. The stage light. The stage light's signature feature is definitely this rim light effect. And the secret to achieving this effect lies in the background, which is often black to allow the rim light to stand out dramatically. So you know the usual steps. I decided the light will come from above, so I added a slight gradient to the shadow to give a sense of form. 
Then it's time to add the lights. For rim light, I tried keeping it super thin and minimal, not adding more than necessary. The light was also so strong that it created this glow effect where it's in contact with the surface. Any dust particles passing through the lights will also pop out. From here on, I tweaked the image as I saw fit, adjusting things like contrast, hue, and saturation. In case you're wondering, here's how my layers looked. And overall, it's quite simple and straightforward. At this point, my illustration was done. Well, not really, because I have an idea that I've been dying to try out. A while back, I saw this video by the illustrator, Retrus. I was inspired by how beautiful the 3D elements blended in with his 2D illustrations. And uh, I wanted to try something similar. So since the beginning of this attempt, I plan to do just that with the 3D skills that I learned in my previous video. Which could either look really cool or end up in total disaster. Anyways, what I did was model the 3D elements, did some composition stuff, don't know what to do next, look up all the tutorials on YouTube, do whatever the tutorials tells me to do, then render it out, put it in Photoshop, and I hate this. So I did this, then that, then this, and that, and this, and done. And somehow, it actually turned out really good. My goal was to take advantage of the beautiful refractions made by the 3D software in order to enhance the beautiful staged lighting, which I think was a success. Although this lighting was beautiful, I think the next one is even prettier. Colors of the sky during sunset are often vibrant and complementary, and depending on the clouds or lack thereof, can result in sunset from the typical orange-blue to golden hours to the beautiful alpine glow. The inspiration for this attempt came from this photograph. I love the unique angle so much, I decided to build a whole scene based on this photo. And when it comes to the background, I'll be honest, I didn't want to draw it. So I chose to use Unreal Engine to make the sky. This also allows me to easily adjust the time of day and cloud volume. Otherwise, you could always take your own photo or grab one from somewhere like Unsplash. I find that having a reference of what you're going for can make your life much easier. For the shadows, I added a grayish blue onto the whole character, then added orange glow to the bottom to reflect the color of the sun. To help the character stand out from the background, I added a rim light similar to what we did previously. At this point, the main lighting was in place, so now it's time to add details and polish things up. The colors here felt a little bit dull, so I wanted to make it more vibrant. I was experimenting with the hue, saturation, and contrast when I accidentally made this and I instantly fell in love with the colors and decided to stick with this. And although this was no longer a real sunset, the lighting is still based on the principle of a sunset. As for finishing touches, I added colored glows to the top and bottom of the character, mainly because I thought it was cool. I also really like how Rella paints over the line art with the color of the sunset. It's a really subtle effect, which was very effective at showing the intensity of the light, and added stars and grains to the background. And finally, the good old chromatic aberration. And this might be my favorite outcome from this study. I was happy with how I was able to transform and stylize the illustration as I pleased, thanks to having a solid understanding of the lighting. I wasn't able to go over everything, so if you want to take a closer look, you can download the files for yourself. As for the final lighting, I'm not quite sure what to categorize it as, but for now, let's call this dappled light. Because I want to focus on the simple, yet impactful lighting often seen in anime illustrations, where the bright sun shines through leaves or clouds, creating this unique and dramatic contrast between light and shadows. As for how to do this, I think you already know. But this time, the shadow will take on the shapes of leaves or clouds. You could draw this yourself, or again, grab an image from somewhere like Unsplash and set it to multiply blend mode. For now, this is just a placeholder, but by doing this, you're essentially getting yourself to that 80% mark without having to do much. I then added the second shadow, which I kept very minimal. I like Rilla's use of pinkish glows around the lights. It's a nice touch that makes the image feel that much more calming and sentimental. So I did something similar by brushing the area in lights with a pinkish glow. I was going for a cuter style for this attempt, so aside from some shadows and glows here and there, I really didn't have to do much. Once I was happy with the overall look and feel of the image, I played around with the shadows to see which one I liked the most. When I put this image side by side to Rella's, I realized that there wasn't enough contrast between the lights and shadows. 
so I fixed that using curves and brightness sliders. Lastly, I added some out of focus flowers to guide the viewer's sight, and added dust and chromatic aberration to finish everything off. Yeah, and that was it. By far the simplest, yet so impactful. I decided to keep things simple to let the juxtaposition between light and shadow be the star of the image. And that's the power of lighting. So what exactly did I get out of this two month study? In the beginning, I began by mimicking Vela's workflow and art style, trying to grasp what makes her artwork so beautiful. But I quickly realized that copying techniques alone won't get me far. I had to solidify my understandings through studying fundamentals. And by the end, I was able to use what I learned to craft my own unique approach to lighting in order to make it fit my vision. And the best part, I finally learned how to give my illustration the missing impact. That's wow factor that I've been searching for. As always, thanks for watching.